today's message is love turns to hate to preserve you from idol worshiping. Love turns to hate to preserve you from idol worshiping. <laughs> Sometimes when God is doing good, <laughs> we think he's doing evil. So, so, you know, sometimes we would need to sacrifice the thing that we are taught is the most precious things in our life just for us to be right with God. Sometimes, as a matter of fact, God will allow us to suffer losses. And God might even allow us to suffer losses of some of the most precious things in our lives for us to just be able to understand God's mindset as against our mindset. You know, the way things are supposed to be run on the earth is, uh, is by laws and principles. So when you break the laws and principles, you know, your cries won't help, your tears won't help, your emotions won't help, you just must align yourself to God's principles and, and laws. So life is meant to be lived and to function by principles and principles of truth and grace, by laws, by principles. And, but we, even though we are religious, and even though we are Christians, we are religious, we are pastors, we are ministers, but we often break God's principles. We violate these principles. And but because you, we violate the principles and God will not violate himself and he will not violate his own principles, sometimes he's left with no option. He's left with no option other than to let us suffer pain, to let us go through pain so as to bring us back to order. You see, God is a God of order. And order in the eyes of God means abiding by the principles that the earth is meant to function by. Order in God's understanding is that we, as his children that were created by him to live on the earth, must also live in accordance with his own order and principles. With, we must abide under his truth and under his righteousness. And that when we live according to his principles, that is when things run well for us. That's how things work out for us. But when we violate his principles, we don't really violate God. You cannot really break God's law. When instead of breaking God's law, we end up breaking ourselves. So God really doesn't have anything to do with punishment. People talk about God punishing you, God doing this for you, doing you. Well, what we call God punishing us is actually the laws punishing us. The laws that are broken are the consequences that we reap. We only get the consequences of broken laws. We get the consequences of broken principles. And when the principles are broken, we reap the consequences and we say, God is punishing you. No, God is not sitting down in heaven <laughs> with a tall, uh, with a long skin. Yeah. And all, he, he didn't put all his angels everywhere and making all the angels to look who to punish today. You know, no, no, that's not God's business. So God is not busy sending angels to that place to punish that one and to punish that one and to punish this one. God is not in the business of going about looking for who to punish. Oh, no, God is too big for that. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's not so petty, he's not so little. Is full of love, but there are some instances when he cannot help it, <laughs> and he cannot help it. Not that even if when he cannot help it, that he's going to conscience after you and say, Now I'm going to catch you, I catch you now. <laughs> no, no, that's the idea some of us had, the concept of God that some of us had, and that's why religiosity is killing some of us. And we just become religious and we want to, we live in fear and we want to do everything like this because we are thinking God is going to get me. <laughs> no. The laws that you break will get you. 
You see, the laws have already been set in place. The principles are already set. They, they work. We, either, before you are born, either you obey it or you don't obey it, they are there. Either you recognize it or you don't recognize it, they are there. Either, so when you violate the principles and the laws of God, you violate yourself. When you break the laws of God, you actually break yourself. That's when you begin to feel the consequences and the pain. It's not that God is chasing after you to punish you. No, you feel the consequences of the laws that you have broken. Because So the, the, the consequences come automatically. But because of his love, he, he, he gives time. So it takes time for some of those laws to actually work and the consequences to be reaped. But and that's because of his laws. I mean, because of his love. But eventually, you will see the end result of the laws that are broken. So, now, let's talk about lo love now. When love turns to hate, it's not because God is punishing somebody or anything. It's because some laws and principles have been broken. Let me tell you something about pain and about... You know, because when you when love turns to hate, that is say, talk about pain. That's very painful. And let me tell you something about pain. One thing you should know about pain is this: pain is an evidence, or it's a testimony to the fact that a law has been broken. Whenever you experience pain, that is telling you that something has been violated. For example, if I begin to experience headache now it means something has gone wrong in my system maybe I, I lack some vitamin or some you know I, maybe i'm having bleeding in the head the headache therefore is to let me know that something is wrong i must fix it so whenever you're experiencing pain let's say a break it means something has gone wrong in that relationship something has been broken a principle has been violated so when we see when they, we experience the pain of love turning to hate or love will turn into hatred, it means that there is a violation that is happening, taking place under the, under the, under the, uh, behind the scene. It's just like saying, this is my house now. If, if something, if water begins to, you know, to drop from the ceiling, it means that something has been broken over there. So I, if I even try to patch up this ceiling from here, I try to patch it up and put it back, is not going to solve the problem. I must go to look for the thing that has been broken, you see. If water begins to come out from my floor here now, and it means something, that water is coming from somewhere. I, I just try to clean it. I go clean it every minute. The water will still keep on coming. There is something that has led to that, you know, water that is coming out. Something has been broke. Something has been violated. Something has been broken. If I begin to feel pain in my stomach, like, oh, pain, oh, pain. And I'm just taking painkiller, painkiller. <laughs> then I might discover that I'm having a tumor or a growth or anything like that there. Um, because there is something that needs to be, I must do the diagnosis. I must find out what is wrong. Something is wrong there. That To find out what is causing that pain. The pain, therefore, is just an evidence that something has been violated. Something has been broken. So in life as well and in people relationship as well. So in our people relationships and everyday relationship with people, when we experience things like love turning to hate or love turning to hatred, it means it's not just about that person. You know, so but what we do is that because he's the one who causes it, he's the one I've seen before me, he, she's the one or she's the one or he's the one, we think he's to blame. And we begin to hate, I mean, to go after each other and begin to put blame on people. Nope. A violation has taken place. Look for the principle that has been violated. So, in this, so one of those principles that makes love to turn to hatred is what I'm talking about today. Love turns to hatred when a principle has been violated. And the principle that I'm talking about today is the principle of idol worshipping. Mm -hmm. Most of us commit the sin. And violate the principle of God that is connected to idol worshiping. 
And so when God decides to show his mercy to prevent you from idol worship, because idol worship will eventually will take you to hell. And to save you from hell, instead of saving, instead of letting your soul go to hell, instead of letting you continue in your own way and your own path that will take you to eternal damnation, for that to be prevented, for you not to eternally perish in hellfire and be separated forever from God, God will allow that thing that has become an idol, that thing that you know you have allowed in your life to 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 to, to have you know that you have allowed to violate the law of God, God will take it, He will remove it, so as to be able to preserve you and save you either on earth or to save you eventually. So let's talk about love. As wonderful as life as love is, I mean love is great. Love is great. Love is great. Love is precious. I mean, nothing like love. I mean, the love of a father to, to his children, the love of a mother to, to the children, the love of a wife to the husband, the love of a husband to the wife, the love of parents to their children, the love of children to their parents, the love of uh, uh, love, love, lovers and lovebirds and uh, the love of, you know, just love makes our, our world go about. Love, love. Everything is about love. Love is what making our life to still be existing today. Love is about everything. If we remove love from life and people don't get to fall in love and no love for parents and for children, no love. If life is void of love, life is void of life. Without, without love, there will be no life. Love is about life. And life is all about love. And so nothing as precious as love. Love is wonderful. Love is beautiful. Now, love does not always mean marriage and you know relationship and man between man and woman. Not just love in general. Nothing like love. Nothing like love. Now, as wonderful as love is, I mean, I mean, I don't need to convince anybody about love. People love love. People like love. People understand what love is. Everybody wants to experience love. I mean, the, the greatest deprivation in life is to be deprived of love. So people know what love is. So I don't need to convince you about love. Love is wonderful. Yes, but as wonderful as love is, <laughs> all right? As wonderful as love is. Now listen to this. As wonderful as love is, love could be violated as well. And love could not just be violated only. Love is often abused. And so let's look at what God says about love. Let's look at what God says about love. Uh, where do I start now? Let's go to Mark, the book of Mark. Mark chapter 12, the book of Mark. Mark chapter 12, verse 30, verse 30. Mark chapter 12, verse 30, all right? Now, when it comes to love, there are rules guiding love. There are principles that safeguard love. So even when we are talking of love, there are principles guarding it. And if those principles that are guarding love are violated, love will turn to hate. If, don't, if once you violate the principles that are safeguarding love, or that are surrounding love, or you know, that are supposed to be on which love is built, once you violate that principle, the principle of, you know, not loving right, you must know how to love right. Love must be exercised rightly. Even love to your children. Even love to your parents. Even love to your friends, to your husband, to your children. Even any kind of love must be guarded by God's divine understanding and principles. If you violate the principle of love, if you fail to love correctly, you will be punished for it. Not God will punish you. God is not holding a tree and a stick to try to punish you. That the principles that are violated, the, or the particular principle that is violated, is going to come back as a boomerang to hit you on the face. So now let's examine it. Let's examine the whole thing about love. All right? Mark, Mark chapter 12, verse 30 says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all 
your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. God, this is so deep. There is so much in that verse. You can't believe it. There is so much in that verse. I'm tempted to just take off and begin to talk about this verse a lot. But I'm going to discipline myself. And I'm going to face my own topic. Why love turns to hate. Now, in that particular verse that we just read, there is a safeguard. There is protection in love. And that protection is clearly stated in that passage. He says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, too, with all your mind, with all your strength. I mean, please take note about one word there. In all the four phrases that I read, there is one com com common commonality there, one word that is common. The word all. It says, and you shall love the Lord thy God. We understand that. People just say, what's the first one? Love the Lord thy God. No. There is we leave out the safety. The safeguard. And the safeguard says, with all your heart, if you will love God, but not with all your heart, there will be some emptiness there. And that emptiness will be filled with something else. So for something else not to share, not to compete for your heart, because where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. For your heart not be to, to be stolen, you are needed, you are required. The love for God in your heart must be absolute. Absolute. It must be total. It must occupy your heart 100%. It must be all of your heart to love God. But you see today, you look around. <laughs> it's hard to find people who love the Lord with all their hearts. I tell you that one. People love God enough to go to church. Yeah, yeah. People love God enough to go and give their offering. Yeah, yeah. They think they are heroes. Oh, yeah, big deal. <laughs> but they are not safe. And they are not protected. Because as long as you fail, as soon as you fail to love God with that absolute commitment, as soon as you fail to love God with that, with that totality, of commitment with all your and all all and in every department of your life God demands absolutism and God demands that absoluteness in not just in regards to your heart it demands that your love for him will take over your heart to take over your soul it will be it will conquer your soul your emotions your feelings, your will, your mind. It will take over your soul hundred and absolutely. Now, and that love must go over to your mind and conquer everything as well. Then it will go to your strength and dominate it without leaving a yacht of space. So once you, but you know the way we love God now. And we just love God enough for, it, for him to bless us. You put yourself in trouble right there. Boom. You just think you just sank yourself right there. You just you just finish yourself. When you are really loving God enough, just for him to be able to bless you now and to be able to show and to show the pastor that I come every Sunday. Well, ah, I mean, you are deceiving yourself. You are just deceiving yourself. You are putting yourself in greater problem because if you don't love the Lord God with all your heart, magagabuku duku gugu gugu, shengegi gigi 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 gigi, 
Magaga gudu 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 ige ge 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 magaga garu gudu 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 ige ge du 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 ige ge 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 mamba baba kidi gaba du da bu da bu ru kutu bu ru kutu kutu gembe kita baka gaba kabu ru kudu 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 ge 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 mamba baka kaka kaka asa kosho kosho se kata 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 kana makasoro. May the Lord God save us, open our eyes, give us insight, give us understanding. May the Lord God of heaven throw his light into our mind, into our spirit, into our soul. May he send this illumination for us to have the spirit of understanding, for us to be able to see how he says, to catch his heart and to be delivered from any other thing that is fighting to take over our lives. Well, now, let's go back to where we were. Well, if you don't love God with all your heart, with, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, <laughs> that is very dangerous. Now, what makes it dangerous? Because a heart cannot be left void, even by 1%. So even if you love God, let's assume, for 99%, but you still have that 1% empty space, something else will come in and just hide inside that 1% place that you are having left. And then it will begin to grow and begin to push for more space and more you know, uh, control and you, know, you push yourself in danger. So in love, there is protection. The first protection in love it's not even what I'm talking about now. The second thing I'm talking about now is, you know, second protection of love. The first protection of love is this. Listen, the first protection, you say, you say, love God and love your neighbor. But the first protection is in the very first part of, because he said it's just the two are one commandment, the commandment of love. And it says, but the fact first, that commandment that is just one has two parts to it. But the very first part of it is a protection as well. You must love the Lord thy God before you love your neighbor. You see, there are so many people. The problem of Europe today is that they are in humanism. And they love, they, know, they want to do everything for man, but they even forgot about God. Eh? That is danger, you see. When you begin to love people, and loving God, or loving God just leads you and loving people more, or loving God just people and not loving God, you just miss road. <laughs> it's like Europe now is becoming totally ungodly. They are going to hell in droves. Why? You cannot fulfill the second commandment without fulfilling the first one now. So you must be first of all not just love God alone. That's the first line of defense. So your first line of defense is you want you want to love anything. First of all, love God. Then any other thing, you can love your family after that, then you can love your children after that, then you can love your whatever after that. But the kind of love, the second line of defense is when you begin to love God, you don't just love him to just say, I put a mark there, I just put a, you know, just to, you know, but you know you can all deceive God. You cannot just, you know, you know, tell him that at least I've, uh, you know, I've showed up and... Uh, <laughs> God he can know himself. He cannot be deceived. He cannot just deceive God anyhow. No, he can't. So when you want to say you love God, the only kind of love that is recognized in heaven, no, and the only kind of love that will turn and can be converted to treasure for you is only the love that is with all. It didn't say you love me with 90% of your heart. You see, if you read it, it didn't say with half of your heart or with some of your heart or with 90% of your heart or with 30%. No, okay, let's say 75% of your heart. The only thing that he recognizes, heaven only counts with people whose love is absolute. It's not that he will not recognize you as his child or something or you will not go to heaven, but you will not be protected. Because an idol will come and take the place of that one percent, and it will come and begin to you know to push back your love for God. So th there are two lines of defense there. The first line of defense is that first of all, even when you want to talk about love, talk about love for God first, 
And you say there are so many people that are loving people, God. I mean, they are loving people. They are doing good work. They are doing all that, but they don't even think about God. So that's your first line of defense. Otherwise, because that first line, like that first line of defense, is so important that <laughs> the danger of that one is hellfire straight. You you don't love God. You are just loving anybody. Love anybody you want. Do any kind of kindness you want to do. You go to hell. No break. No go slow at all. <laughs> no no traffic. You just go to hell express. If you just love in any everybody, you do anything you want, and you don't love God. <laughs> so you don't want to raise that one. But then even the ones who are saying they love God, you need that second line of defense. It has to be absolute. You see, some there's something I must tell you. In this kingdom, anything that is not absolute doesn't work. It's just like saying you say you have faith. It is only when your faith is absolute that it works up. You know, I've told people this example before. I said, you know, when I was a kid growing up in my village in Nigeria with my grandmother, you know, you know, I, you know, I was trying to use, I was, because she was not around and I decided to boil some eggs because I used to see her boil eggs. But we know, but we used to boil egg with firewood in our place. <laughs> so it depends on how much firewood you put, in, that the the intensity that determines the intensity of the <laughs> of the fire and of the energy that is being produced. So I just put some firewood enough to have enough charcoal, just enough charcoal we had, but I didn't have enough. But it was hot enough because when I put my hand in that uh, in the water, oh, it's hot. So, but I put my egg inside, the two eggs, I put them inside. Ah, ignorance. Huh? So, I, <laughs> I put the egg. So, I will come back after, I will be putting, I will be putting the firewood and trying to blow air into the charcoal. And make it, and it's, to me it's hot. But I do it for 30 minutes. I say, ah, this thing is not cooked now. I don't think this thing is cooked there at all. So, to cut the long story short, I was blowing that, but by now I know that that water was only hot like 60%, 60 degrees, 60 degrees hot. So to me that's hot. I mean, you try to put your hand in the water of 60 it's hot. So I was like, whew, it's hot. But why is it that, that, uh, that those eggs are not boiling? That's what I can understand. That's what I said. I was there for three hours. The first three hours I took one of those eggs and I said, okay, let me do a break. Because about 30 minutes only. When my mother, my grandmother will boil the thing, just in the next 20 minutes or 15 minutes or 30, 30, maximum 30 minutes, even the, all, the eggs themselves will be calling to pronounce the food, they, it's open, they, it's cracked, and it, the shell has cracked, and you've seen it that it's boiled, I mean, it's white, you can see it. But me, this one is not boiled, it's just the way I put it, the way it's made it. <laughs> so I said, me, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to find out what's that. Ah, how can I be doing this for three hours? My eyes were red with, you know, Flame and all those things. If you have been in the village, you know what I'm talking about. Because I'm, and the flame is all into my eyes. So after three hours of struggling, I said, let me just take one of them. When I put like this, everything just kind of, ah, ah, so this is evil. <laughs> so this is evil. But like, what was this? What kind of water is this one? I know it was the water. Or it was the fire. Or, or what kind of egg is this one? So I just said, okay, let me do another three hours. So I was doing another three hours for the other. <laughs> But I already lost one. I didn't want to raise the other one and lose, and lose that one as well. <laughs> so another three hours, I was blowing the fire. <laughs> I was there for six hours. That was how I did it that day. I was so frustrated and it became a mystery for me. So until I grew up, <laughs> and now I'm discovering, ah! Because even though I was, I was increasing the intensity of the fire, but I will increase it from 20 degrees to 30. Then from 30 degrees to 40. Then I will get to 60 degrees. And then 70 degrees, 80 degrees. The fire was there. So the last one I opened it, it the whole inside. Not only the white one was a little bit thick, and but it was not strong enough to even be, be able to. So I didn't know that one thing with eggs is this. You know, if you have hot water, even if it is 99 degrees, and you put that thing there, the the egg inside. The egg doesn't boil. Though. The only water that boils egg for it to be boiled is only when it passes when it's hundred degrees. 
When it's 100 degrees, only when water's intense, it has to be absolute. The heat, you know, has to be absolute. Once it is 100 percent, 100 degree, 100 percent, 100 degree water like that, and you put it, you only need five to ten minutes. The thing is, boy, for you, poo. I kill my day. I kill my eyes. I kill my stomach. I did. I just was suffering the same thing in this kingdom. Of. If, so sometimes we only compare our own faith and our commitment to God, our love for God with other people's love. So we see people all around our churches and our, our, our surrounding, and we see that these people, they don't even love God at all. Their own love for God is just about 10%. Then you see other people, they just go to church and pay time. Their own love is just 20%. Then you see other people at the thing in the praise and worship, their own love is 30%. We don't compare. So we compare with each other and we say, Oh, I'm better than everybody. My own is absolute. You so I'm, your own is just 50 degree. But you are saying I'm compared to everybody else. I'm, I'm a champion. I'm the local champion. But in this kingdom, your faith doesn't work. And your love is not counted unless it's 100%. Everything that belongs to God has to be absolute. It is only things that are absolute in this kingdom that work. So when your love for God is not absolute, even though God still recognizes you as his child, even though you are still worshiping God and you are still following him, but you open the door. You are not protected. So you are better than the ones who don't even believe in God in the first place. Okay, the ones who don't believe in God in the first place, they are children of hell. They are going to hell directly. But you, <laughs> you that has been born again, you love God, but you are loving him not with absolute surrender. You stand in danger, and I will tell you your own danger. I will not waste time with the one who don't believe in God. And those ones you know they are danger; they just die and go to hell. But you that is born again, that is, uh, you know, loving God just as you choose, or he compares it to others, but it's not absolute. But you see, God is not a deceiver. If he says it, that is with all. You know, he cannot be lying. And if he says it with all, we not just say, okay, let me just do compromise for you. You know, I see that you're dry. <laughs> He will not do compromise for you and say, let me just remove this standard and reduce it for you. Then he will be a liar. Then he will be testifying against himself. So, it's not that you will not go to heaven, no. It's not that you are not recognized by God. You understand what I'm saying? But what it means is that you are not, you are giving, you know, the door is open. You have not protected yourself. If the second line of protection is not there. And what begins to happen? Let me tell you what begins to happen. What begins to happen is that because it is not with all your heart, if it is all with all your heart, God is taking you over. You are addicted to God. The love that is absolute is the love that works. The faith that is absolute is the faith that works. Just like that, my head. If it's not 100 degrees, it will not boil up. It could just do all kind of... So you could say, okay, but my own is... Uh, 90 degrees, 90 degrees hot, and it's only just 20 degrees hot. Yes, it's only 20 degrees will be there for the for the rest of eternity. I will not boil. Your own too, <laughs> that is not 100% that's 90 degrees, will also not boil. So, now, listen closely. That is the, what, the reason why I'm talking about this topic. That you should love the Lord that God with all your heart. With all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. It's total, absolute com commitment God is the, uh, demanding from us. And that is why what happens is, if you don't love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So it means if I'm going to school, I want to go to school so that I will be the best there. So that the, and whatever knowledge I get, eh, I am going to use it only for him. That's absolute. So for example, I want to... Uh, love, you know, if I want to marry or something, if the reason I want to do anything, I want to do it just for his, for him and for his glory. If I'm going to job, I want to go to that work today only to be able to find the world manifesting him and glorifying him and fulfilling his agenda. If I wake up in the morning, the only reason why I even wake up in the first place is to be able to live that day for him and to be able to fulfill his desire for my life that day. It, the only thing I do, the only reason I do any single thing at all. It's because I want to use... I could still be enjoying myself in the process. So, but the whole underlying reason is for him. Even if I go for holidays. 
Even that, in that early days, I mean, I still want to use it to glorify his name. Even if I'm reading in the restaurant, I'm still doing that, you know I mean, using that time to convert to things that will glorify. So that's when you are absolutely, I mean, he's the only reason for everything. Because that's what he said in Colossians 1. He said he created all things for him, I mean, by himself and for himself. Even you, he created you only for himself. So he's not about ready to begin to argue with anybody or with you and say, okay, he had that so He created everything, including you, only for one reason, no? for himself. So so what are you doing then? You, are, you didn't create yourself now. <laughs> Nobody has created you for, for any other assignment. He's the one who created you. He's, he has a reason why he did that. And he said the reason is for himself. So what are you doing? What are you now doing? <laughs> so that's why it has to be absolute commitment. But when it's, our love is not absolute, the danger we stand is this. We begin, if you are pastors, you get to a place as a pastor when you discover that you are falling in love because there is a place there. Even though you love God, you, you, are, you are a pastor. But you will get to a place where you begin to enjoy the church. And you get you be, you begin to have love for the ministry. Even though you are think, you are saying you are doing it for God, though, but the love for the ministry, for church, for people will begin to enter your heart. And before you know it, you don't even know which one you love most first. I mean you love most anymore. Is it God or is it the work? Is it people or is it church or is it God himself? You don't even know anymore. That is the danger. When it's the love to him and for him alone is not absolute, you will not even realize when many other things become idols. When idols begin to come and take over your heart. You will not even know. You know, I know. Okay, for example, let me just give you an example here. Can you believe it that when I began to tell people that I was starting, I was leaving Ukraine and going back to Africa, it's, I mean, I'm telling you, even big men, even <laughs> respected men of God, even I'm not talking, just talking of Christians. I'm talking of respected men of God. They are telling me, how can you do that? How can you do that? But you have given your life to building this church. Oh, I mean, 30 years. I've been living here for 30 years. 30 years building ministry. And oh, you just give it to somebody like that. You see? So once you get to that place that you cannot walk out or walk away from something that is a sign for you, that you are no more the one owing that thing. That thing is now owing you. That is a sign for you that you are. It's no more God. Though. Even if you are saying it's God, I'm building it for. It's God. I, I, of course, you can display anything you want for yourself. You can convince yourself or others with anything you want. But if you cannot walk away from that thing and just forget it, and not even put somebody to be controlling and be manipulating people. But if you are not ready to walk away like that, even if it will mean that you will never go back there again, you should be ready. Just to be in love with him and be satisfied or alone with the fact that you have him. If you cannot do that, well, of course, we don't say you should do that. Of course, you should still put your system in place, your structure in place. But in your heart, I'm talking of heart. And you know what? Many pastors are still pastors today. My colleagues who are, who are supposed to have walked away for a long time. Because you will not be able to obey God. You will not be able to do even all that instructions that God is giving you to do because you are so consumed by the love not for God anymore. But you are thinking, you are convincing yourself that it's love for God. But it's already love for, you know, the position, love for glory, love for the comfort, love for the comfort zone, love for yourself. You know, it could be anything. And, you know, if you really love yourself, I mean, if you really love God, you must always work on getting your heart circumcised, getting yourself detached 
from things from time to time. You know, like that's what I was telling you people the other time that even with my wife, we came to a place where we had to make a make an agreement among ourselves that you know you should give me. I mean, she had to give me up to God. You should just assume that I could die at any time. Because if you are, if I'm not ready to die, I won't have been able to do what I've done in Ukraine. Here. You you cannot even change a nation if you are not ready to die. So if you hold on to your life, that is one. That's why Jesus said, unless you deny yourself. And your father, your mother, and everything. Even he said he hate. <laughs> Unless you hate your father, your, what is he talking about? He's about this thing. So you must not have anything taking that place of all your heart, all your soul. It, that place of absolutism must not be. You must not even give place for it. So when you don't have that absolute love, when you don't have that total, you know, commitment, and total just you will be compromised. You will be having the danger of being compromised. And, you know, to some, my, I know my colleagues, to, I mean, to many pastors, ministry or church, it's long become an idol. Any other thing that you love so much that you cannot give up for God is an idol. Anything that you cannot give up, what, even if it is your wife, you cannot give up and just walk out. I don't say, well, I believe in divorce or make you not go and uh, change my word. But, I'm saying if, you know, if there are, you know, you know, there are some people that will walk out of ministry or even walk out of God because of, they don't want to lose their wife or they don't want to lose their husbands or they don't want to lose their family. You don't think people do that. But if you are not ready to lose my wife, that's what I'm saying to you now, that even with my wife, we have to come to a place where I would say, you should be ready to lose me. And she has assumed that, I'm, you know, yeah, she could lose me at any time. So you must be ready for that. And I have assumed that I, I can lose her at any time. Let me make it worse. We have three kids. Our children know we have gathered them together. You, we, you can lose all... We, if, what about if we lose the three of them at one day? What, we will still love God. We will still continue. We have already released them already. They know about it. And they have also been told to release their father and their mother. We have made that agreement. That that is what it means. In this kingdom, oh, that is what it means to be totally in love. God is the only one you should not be able to lose. You know, if you are you are afraid of losing anything or you are not even ready, you must get yourself to have gotten to that place when you are ready, when you have already done it, even before it happens. And oh, that is the only time, that's the only guarantee for you for it not to happen in the first place. Because he says, if you are not willing to let something go, if you are not willing to lose your life for my sake, then you, you will lose it. Anything you are not ready to lose for the sake of God, you will lose it. But anything you are holding on to is an idol and you will lose it. So that is what makes love to turn to hatred. Love begins to turn to hatred when God begins to see deeper, deep in your heart that you have been, you are now falling in love. You have, you have now exalted and elevated love for your husband to a place of course you are still going to church every Sunday, you are still singing the praise and worship and still giving tithe and offering, but deep in your heart your strength is that your husband though deep in your heart your your pillar your life is that your spouse or your husband or your wife or is it your family so at the end of the day, you are even you are even getting and deriving more joy and satisfaction from maybe your house or from your family or from your children than even from God or by himself. So what does that mean? You don't even realize it because these things are so subtle. That is idol right there. So anything that is giving you more reason for joy, I mean, like me, in my own life I know it. And I'm ashamed of saying this and a little bit embarrassed, but I think I should just tell you. You know, I've been under false accusation, all kind of ridiculous communists and KGB have been fighting me, coming up with different stories and all that. And I've been in court for the past eight years. My wife will tell you this, and even my church will tell you. 
I got to a place in ministry that I was so satisfied. I was absolutely fulfilled. And uh, I got everything. I was so relaxed. I didn't even know. Father, I was even telling my wife, the princess, let's leave Ukraine now. She said, why? I mean, everything, was go everything is going for us. Everything is just perfect. I said, we have to leave. That was 10 years ago. I said, God, I feel that God is telling me that if you don't leave now, at the height of everything, that we are going to for, for, I mean, we are going to encounter such a problem that it will be alone level, but we should be ready to pay the price. So my wife will tell you, testify to this. My wife said, no, we cannot leave. <laughs> I said, okay, praise we will not leave. But right now, that I told you that, we, God told me that we are going to fall into so much problem. And even at the point, I was asking God, where is the problem? Let it come. Because I couldn't leave because my wife was saying, I cannot live with the children now. They are in school. Where would they? I don't want to take them away from school. Then go to another country, another language, another culture. You know, I don't want us to live. Okay. We will not leave. But I was so, I entered into a comfort zone. Comfort zone when everything was good, everything was okay. I was already even anticipating it that something horrible must happen. Some bad things must happen because I'm even afraid of the comfort and of the success and of the glamour. And because I knew it was out of my hand and I knew that was the only thing that was going to save me and my family and my ministry. So even though I feel terrible pain and terrible uh, mis no, mis justice or what they call it? This injustice. injustice. Terrible injustice in what has been happening to me. But you know, one ear of your head will not even fall down to the ground if God will not allow it. God's answer is in it. It is when God loves you. You know, I'm going to say some things that are going to sound very harsh. You know, some people have lost, lost their spouses, their husbands in ministry. Or you might not be ministry, Christians. You just see that a young man, 30 years or 50 years old, died. You know why? That person has become the source of life in that family. Even though everyone is still praying to God, though, but God is just like 50%, 50-50, or 80%. When the love for God is not absolute, it goes from, gives room to idol worship, and you don't even know it. When somebody refuses to leave his church or to give it up, God will steer up a problem in that ministry. Because of love, just to be able to... Because there will be hate. That love that that church was having for that church... I mean, that pastor is going to turn to hate. Why? Because God wants to preserve that person. You know, he wants to preserve you from idol worshiping. He, he will even take your husband away. Why? So that he himself will go to heaven and you yourself will go to heaven too. <laughs> he will even take your child away. Oh, as horrible as this is sounding now, he will even allow maybe to get sick or to die or something so that you will get back to a place. Where you are supposed to be. Let me show, prove that to you. You don't need to uh, believe me. You don't need to believe me. Let me go to uh, Exodus. Exodus 20. From verses 1 to 5. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God. Because this is the first commandment. God does not want you to entertain anything in your heart apart from me. And that's why he said, when you want to love me, make sure it is absolute from the beginning. If it is with all your heart, then you are protected. Then you are saved, you secure yourself. But when you don't do it with all your heart from the beginning, things find that they are way into our lives and our and they take us over. So that's what they're saying here. Uh, I'm the Lord your God 
who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, you shall have no other gods before me. There's no other gods. I don't. No other idol. No other gods before me. Now, verse 4. You shall not make for yourself, you say. For yourself. Don't even put yourself ahead or your desire ahead at all. That's why Jesus said, even if you don't, if you don't hate your father, your father, your mother, and even yourself, you've got to deny yourself. You know, there are some things that we, I can give you everything, or I give up everything, but this one is my own. This one is for myself. Don't make yourself any, yourself, yourself. I keep this for myself. You take everything, but this is my own family, my child, my wife, my children. No, this one is just what I like. It's my witness. It's, you know, everything is for you, but it's my own. Sometimes it's not death, you see. Sometimes if, you, if it's your child that you put like that, it will just go wayward like that. <laughs> if you love your child too much, oh, to the place that is becoming a, that place that place of idol worshiping, if it's redemptive, if it is still redemptive, redemp uh, Redeemable, what they call it? Redeemable. If it is still redeemable, you will not die. That child could just go crazy. You know, not crazy. Like, you will just be disobedient. <laughs> From being, you just become wayward. Because it's still redeemable. God will, you know, through that problem with that child, you might humble yourself and, you know, come back to the place of God's priority. Or uh, maybe your business. Your business has been the center of your life. It has become an idol. I, I know. If it is still redeemable, you begin to have problems so that that problem will drive you to the place of absolute love for God. Then that's okay. But if it's no more redeemable, it will just collapse everything. It just even you your die, your child, that child will die. Maybe that is the thing that will get some of us. So he said, You shall not make for yourself. See, it's all about ego. What makes us to love things more than, uh, you know, more than, more than God? What makes us to love things, to put things in the priority? You know, how, another way you could know if you love anything more than God is, what is it that will take number one place in your life every single second? What are the decisions you are taking? Are your decisions always in consideration of God's priority for us? I don't think so. It's the priority of my family, myself, my uh, this, my dad, my dad, my children. We don't put God as our priority. And that's why God, when he loves us, oh, he allows things to happen to drive us back. That's how love, that's why the love between your children and yourself might just turn to hate. The love between yourself and your colleagues might just turn to hate. The love between you and your members might just turn to hate. The love between you and your family and reality might just turn to hate. Why? Thank God that love can turn to hate. Otherwise, we would have just have our own little, little idols, every one of us in our homes. And we'll go to hell. So, you shall not make for yourself. This is all about me. It's all about ego. Cave, I carved image. Any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, it doesn't matter where. Only God has to have that supreme, absolute place. That's why it doesn't matter. Heaven above, earth beneath, water under, you shall not have any other thing that you love more than me. Because when you love anything more than God, when you put anything before God, you are bowing down before them. That's worship. Anything that is your priority is what you worship. Anything that's your priority is what you what you what what is your idol. Anything that you give yourself in obedience to is your idol. Especially when it's money. You shall not bow down to them and worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, you see. Because God is a jealous God. Love for God has to be, first of all, absolute in your heart. With all your heart, your soul, and your, your might. Your mind, your mind, your might. Then you can love any other thing after that. Then, he said, yeah. If you don't do that, he says, and you begin to curse. He said, I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visited the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. You know, punishment begin to, things begin to fall apart. But showing mercy to those who love me. You see, it's about love. Nothing is superior to love. Loving him. But how do you love him? Jesus helps us out. You've got to love him with all. So I want you to examine yourselves now, every one of you. And uh, see what is it that you uh, 
What is it that you might have loved? Or uh, adore more than God himself. How many, what are those things? How many of those things uh, do you have you exalted in your life more than God? And are you really, can you really openly tell God that your love for him is absolute? That you love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and with all your mind. Can you really tell God that it is a total love affair with him? Are you really sure of that? Well, everybody's got to ask. You know, the good thing about God is that he has, a way, he has ways, many ways of bringing you back into, into feelings. <laughs> into teaching you valuable lessons. <laughs> so, um, when Jesus said, I didn't come with, you know, I came with sword. They said, I didn't come with peace. Some people say, I just bring peace, peace, peace. No, 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 no. Jesus is not just about peace. Yes, he brought peace, the prince of peace. But he also said, there are some instances eh, where I bring sword. You know what that sort means? He said, I bring sorrow among wife and husband, father and mother, children. And why? Because anywhere where there is love, where there is attachment, you are attached to your mother and father, or your mother or father more than you are attached to it, it brings sorrow. It brings separation. That's what happens. When you love your child more than him, he said, I bring salt. I didn't bring peace. So whenever there is a love that is greater than for the absolute God, the total God, the God Almighty, whenever there is any attachment, whenever you are attached to any other thing beside God, it brings salt and not peace. To cut between you and anything that you are loving more than the Creator. That's why I say I didn't just so he brings sword. Sword. He said between husband and wife, there are people, between father and mother, between you know, children. Why? Because where there is because those are the closest people to you. That's why he mentioned those ones. Because they are the closest people to you. They are the people that will stand the danger of loving beyond everything else. And when you love them beyond anything else, everything else like that, they are the ones that are. That's when you stand the danger of becoming, they become idol to you. Your children, your, your parents, your spouse. That's why I said it brings sword in that kind of situation. So as to bring that separation so that you'll be attached more to God than to man. Well, here we are. That's it, that's it for today. All right. Thank you, everybody. Blessings.